G'day, it's Brezzo, and welcome back to part two of building a DIY sand mower for the home foundry. Started on this project because I got sick of mixing foundry sand by hand, and I figured that a machine was going to be very useful to me. Uh, not that I do a lot of foundry work, but when I do, the one thing that puts me off is getting my hands into a great big tub of rock hard sand and trying to break it up and make it uh, into green sand. What I thought I'd show you today is some of the progress I've made since the last video. Now, when we looked at that, what I had was the motor unit and the drive unit assembled on this one piece of 50 millimeter square hollow tube. And I showed you that running and it seemed to have lots of torque. It seemed to be doing uh, the correct RPM that I was looking for, which is 22 RPM. And what I said I'd do is go ahead and make up this into a frame. This is based loosely on a design I saw by Lucky Gen 1001. He did a strip down and a rebuild on a sand muller that he made. And it's the type where the drum rotates and the compactor roller is basically just free to ride up and down on top of the sand. I like that design because you can completely cover this uh, hub which rotates the drum. There's no penetration through from the rotating section through to the sand. So all of the sand is contained in the drum and it's pretty hard for it to get out of the drum and onto any of these mechanical parts. All right, what I thought I'd do now is just show you what I've done with this frame. Now this is all made out of galvanized steel because I have to put this outside. It's gonna be under an awning, but it's still gonna be uh, subjected to some weather. So as much as possible I want this to be made of galvanized steel. So it's on wheels so I can move it around when I want to use it. Uh, I've got a handle at this end and that allows me to sort of roll that around and <laughs> what I found before I put this handle on here was that you tend to run over your own feet if you're walking backwards. This gives you enough um, extension away from the frame so you can sort of maneuver that either way, backwards or forwards, and there's less chance you're going to squash your feet. The other thing that I've done is I've fitted a, a jockey roller. I don't know what the correct term for it is, but it's to take the weight of the drum and the compactor roller, and it's on this side here. So let's have a closer look at that. So this is just free to rotate and I position that at exactly the same height as the spindle that the uh, drum will be rotating on. And when I put the drum on there, this will take most of the weight. And for those people who said that, well, they were worried that it wasn't strong enough, I can stand on that, <laughs> no trouble at all. All right, and you know, for the small amount of sand that's gonna be in there, that's not gonna be a problem. So uh, let's look at this running, and you, although you may have seen this already, and then we'll just put the bits on that I've already made. And then I'm going to take you through the build of the compactor roller and the base for the drum. That's all I'm going to have time for in this video. So let's plug this baby in and see what it does. Pretty much got everything bolted down now, although it's got to come apart for paint. So there are probably a few fixings and fasteners missing at this stage. We'll run this under power and just show you how much torque it's got. It's a bit quieter now than what it was when it was running on the bench and that's because it's sort of not rattling around that big uh, steel bench top. There is tons of torque there. I don't think that's going to have any problem at all rotating that sand under the compactor roller. You can see the jockey wheel a bit clearer here now and if I move that a bit, the four uh, six millimeter screws that hold that down allow you to manoeuvre that a little bit, a couple of degrees either side of centre to align correctly. So I'm happy with that part at this stage. So I don't look too closely at my welding. Uh, I'm not a welder <laughs> by any means, but these welds will do the job. That's not a problem. I should have painted it first actually so you wouldn't criticise my welding. So let's, uh, let's jump into the, the build now of the drum to this stage and the compactor roller and then we'll come back at the end and I'll show you what I've done with the compactor roller to stow it when you're actually getting the sand into or out of the drum.
Okay, well that's all semi-tightened down now. I'm not going to finish that until I've got the aluminium skin on this disc and that's the next step. So, yeah, it's looking good. One of the important features of a sand muller is some sort of compactor wheel and the purpose of that is twofold. It helps to break up the lumps of dried green sand that have been in contact with the hot metal and the mould and they can be quite difficult to break up by hand. The other purpose is to force the clay particles in the green sand into intimate contact with the sand particles, or the sand grains. And it's that crushing and rolling process that helps that green sand to become uh, good for moulding metal. And I had four of these cast iron weights and my original plan was just to mount these loose on some sort of an axle and just let them free wheel and roll around the bottom of the drum. But because I had these curved edges, I started to worry that the green sand was going to get wedged into the spaces between the wheels and it was going to build up and it was just going to become a chore. You'd have to clean it, wire brush it and whatnot. So I rethought that whole plan and I'll show you what I've come up with. All right, this is a piece of hydraulic cylinder. Uh, it's a heavy walled steel tubing, very uh, nicely machined on the inside. It's uh, 172 OD, and I marked out a length here that's 150 long. And these cast iron weights are almost the correct size to fit inside that piece of pipe. So I figured if I was to machine off the rounded edge on that uh, disc there, I could fit one in either end of that piece of pipe. And I've already done one here, and that's sort of a, a nice fit inside there at the moment and if I get one more done I can somehow pin these uh, or glue them into the end of that pipe and I'll fill up the void in between with concrete so that's going to give me a nice flat smooth roller that hopefully is not going to pick up the sand I can polish the outside of this it's quite a good finish and it also allows me to sort of compact a, a larger volume of sand at any one time so I think that's where I'm going with this I'll just got to do one more of these weights and cut this through. I'm going to have to use my angle grinder with the cutting disc on it and it's going to take quite a while but uh, that's probably the only tool I've got that's going to do this. And then we'll go over the lathe and I'll just show you how I machined these, these weights, how I did the rims on those.
that's going to take forever. We'll come back when I'm done. almost a finished compactor roller so we'll do the other disc for the other end and then I'll need to make up some sort of a shaft to go through here that can be offset from an arm. And I've just machined up a spigot here from a piece of scrap that I had just ignore that thread that's got nothing to do with it and uh, these weights unfortunately are not cast accurately um, I think the bores have probably just been drilled and the rims of them are not machined, so it's just all rough cast. And I'm holding that against the face of that spigot with an M12 screw and a nut and a big washer. There's enough friction there to drive it. see the rim that that's running out quite a lot but that doesn't matter so what we're going to do is machine off all of that round and bring it to size for the other end of that pipe So you can see there that those uh, rims are nowhere near accurate uh, and I'm using a carbide insert running this 85 RPM and there's something like 20 millimeters got to come off that diameter so we'll come back when that's nearly done and we'll check the size. Interestingly these weights, I don't know <laughs> what they were used for but they stink when you're machining them. It smells like urine. So I don't know what bodybuilders do in their spare time and quite frankly I don't want to know but man they stink. Anyway, let's keep going, get that um, machined off, and we're nearly done. go. Nice finish.
one compactor roller ready for its end caps. Thought I was finished here on the lathe with this steel tube, but I thought about it and I realised that I've got to join the steel tube to these cast iron end plates and I can't really weld it, um, can't braze it, I don't have the gear for doing that. So what I'll do is I'll drill a row of three holes around a scribe line which coincides with the centre of that steel disc and I'll fit one end permanently by welding in these 3 16th countersunk head screws and at the other end I'll make it removable just just in case. <laughs> I might need to get in there at some point to clean it out, I'm not sure. So I'll go ahead now and drill these uh, three radial holes around that edge and we can hopefully wind this up. So this is my drilling attachment. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos before you will have seen this and I've got an indexing attachment on the far end of the spindle of my lathe so I can accurately rotate this round through most divisions that I would use. So I've got it set up for three so let's go ahead and do that now. I'll just knock that disc into the end of the tube there. This one's quite tight, so this is one that I'm going to weld in permanently. I've already countersunk the uh, radial holes around that edge there. So I'm just going to drill through into the cast iron with the 3 16 bit and then insert the screws and just weld over the heads. And the other end, of course, is going to be tapped so I can remove the screws. So it's a bit dodgy. <laughs> I haven't bothered to chalk this in any way. It's really not important for this end. Just hope I don't break a drill bit, that's all. Probably needs to go a bit deeper, but that'll be alright, I can grind the ends off. Nah, what the hell, let's drill it properly. Yep, that's good. So I'll weld over that, grind it off, and that's going to mount that permanently in that end. Alright, they're all done. Just going to get the other ones drilled and tapped now. This end's a little bit more precarious because uh, it's not quite as tight as the other end. Um, it's sort of a bit loose. So I'm just going to spot drill this uh, with the 316 drill bit. Come on. Come on. So there's a spot and I'll drill this in the drill press now which is the tapping size for a 3 16 Whitworth. We'll get one screw in, that'll hold everything, I can do all the rest.
Yeah, I'm not going to go any deeper with that. <laughs> it feels really tight. Just going to run a bottom tap down there. That should give me about uh, two diameters, which we plenty. So I'll cut those screws off a bit shorter. Just thought I'd give you a look at all these parts for the compactor roller before it gets fabricated together and goes into the final assembly of the sand mullet. I did all of these parts off camera, except for this that you've already seen because a lot of it's just straightforward uh, drilling and turning and so on. This is the the main shaft that supports the roller. It's 25 millimeter cold rolled steel. There's a separate uh, bush that goes on the end there, or a cap if you like to call it that, and that's been cross drilled for a cotter pin. Now, <clears throat> when I was designing this, when I was looking at what other people had done, I was sort of a bit appalled at how flimsy this mechanism looked on a lot of uh, sand mullers, and then I realized that uh, this assembly just lifts the compactor roller off the bottom of the drum so you can clear the sand out of the bottom of the drum and when it's operating the compactor roller is just sitting in the bottom of the drum and it's actually being driven by the rotation of the drum. This whole arm assembly is just to lift it and to stop it sort of rolling away uh, so it's keeping it in one place in the bottom of the drum. So that uh, axle fits through the already bored holes in those two and a half kilogram weights. Now the, the fit, you're looking at that and you're saying, gee, that's sloppy. I guess you'd call that agricultural at best. But my reasoning was that there's going to get sand, the sand is going to get in there anyway. You can't avoid that. So if the fit is big enough that the sand grains will just sort of fall out, then you're not going to create a lot of wear. That's why it's cute. Anyway, now there's a, um, another collar that goes on there. This uh, is a piece of 25 millimeter square hollow section. It's been milled to the correct radius on both ends. And that's going to get welded to that cold rolled steel shaft. And that's going to allow me to lift that compactor roller uh, when you want to clear the sand out at the bottom of the drum. At the other end, there's a bush, which is also going to get welded on and that's going to form the pivot point on the frame of the sand muller. So let me get this all tacked together and I'll show you this in place and sort of give you an idea of how it's going to operate. Okay, there's the base of the mixing drum held in place just with two screws at the moment. There'll be six all together when it's done. I've swapped out the cuphead bolts that I used previously for countersunk stainless steel screws with a Torx head and they will be countersunk into the base of the drum. So there'll be nothing projecting above the bottom of that base there. Sides are going to be made from uh, aluminium sheet, three millimeters thick. And we'll look at that in the next video, as well as the skinning of the drum as well. So let's have a look at the compactor roller now and how that goes on. Okay, so there's the, the roller on its arm. This handle here will actually have a wooden handle when it's finished, but that allows you to lift the compactor roller clear so that you can scoop out the sand. That'll be done on the other side of the drum. So when that comes up, that little latch there just drops into place and the compactor roller now is uh, clear of the bottom of the mixing drum. So when you want to put the compactor roller back down again, you just lift it, put the latch back in place and down it goes. All right, there's going to be a nylock nut on that shaft there. Got a bit of messing around to do with fasteners on this as well. But that's the action. I, I'd like that. I think that's going to work well. So locked and back down again. Remember, there'll be a wooden handle there, so you're not going to pinch your fingers in that gap there. And it's sort of under the right conditions. It just does its own things. <laughs> so that's good. Okay, let's see it running again, and then we'll put the compactor roller down.
Okay, I think I'm going to finish this video here now. I've probably gone over my half hour limit. In the next video, we're going to see this thing painted, I hope. We're going to look at the build for the rest of the drum and how I'm going to go about that. We're going to look at the electrical switch or the timer, which is going to go on this leg here. And hopefully we're going to see it mulling some sand. Oh, and um, <laughs> the most exciting part is going to be when I route this edge of the plywood disc. And I've sort of got a novel approach for that. Could end in disaster, so tune in for that. So thank you to all those people who've left comments as well. I always appreciate uh, people pointing out things that I've completely overlooked. One of which is on my to-do list, and that was about venting the gearbox. I didn't realize that these little um, worm drive gearboxes are completely sealed. The one that I have is full of grease. It does generate heat uh, when it's operating in a continuous fashion like this thing will be doing. And that heat can expand the air and the grease inside the gearbox and pop all the seals out. So I don't want that happening. So that, that is to be done yet. Also, I just appreciate uh, hearing people uh, enjoying the build and uh, encouraging me to keep going with it, uh, which is always great. My subscribers getting up towards four and a half thousand now, which is uh, something I never thought I'd see. So thank you very much for those people that are newly subscribed. Okay, join me on the next video and hopefully that'll be the third and final one. And uh, yeah, see you then.